For our last example in section 5.3, we're going to look at two six-sided dice, two fair six-sided dice. They're going to be tossed and summed three times in a row. This is the basic rudiments of how you figure out or begin to figure out probabilities for craps. Um, the dice game where you take two dice at a casino and you throw them. And what matters is the sum of the two dice that are rolled. So let's just start off with a basic review question. What's the probability that the first roll is a five, the next roll is a six, and the third roll is a seven? Now keep in mind, and I added this up here, that dice rolls are independent. Because these are fair dice, they have to be independent, right? The die doesn't have any memory of what it rolled the time before. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the probability of five on the first, and then we're going to multiply it times the probability of six on the second, times the probability of seven on the third. That's how we're going to do this. Okay, well, it might have been a while since we've seen these, so let me go back to the notes so we can find it, because we actually did dice way back in section 5.1, I believe. Nope, sorry, it was section 5.2. Here it is. So we have this is the sample space of two dice when you're just tossing the two dice, but we actually are concerned about the sum, which is this probability distribution we found right here. So five is four out of 36, because there's four ways out of 36 to roll that. Six is five out of 36, seven is six out of 36. And if you're wondering yourself, oh, how I didn't know that, well, honestly, I expect you to be able to recreate this table at any point in time. As a matter of fact, I expect you to be able to not only create this one for six-sided dice, but what if I had only made it four-sided dice? Then it would just be that section of the table. Eight-sided dice would be the same idea, but you'd keep going for two more rows and two more columns. So I expect everybody to be able to make dice sample spaces very, very quickly and easily because they are very quick and easy. They're a little bit tedious, but they're quick and easy. Okay, so we are going to now five. There was four out of 36 ways to roll five. Well, one and four, four and one, two and three, three and two. That's four ways. Then we're going to multiply that by six. Well, that's five out of 36. So two and three, or excuse me, one and five, five and one, two and four, four and two, and three and three. Right? So that's five ways. And we multiply by the probability of seven which is six out of 36. Seven is the most common roll. Actually, you know what, for my own benefit and for your benefit, I'm actually gonna go copy and paste that table in here in one second. There, that way we have it just on our, on our hands quickly and easily to refer to. So we're taking four out of 36 times five out of 36 times six out of 36. So I'm gonna need a calculator to figure this out. So let me grab it. I'm going to shift this over just so I can have the calculator up as well. All right, so the denominator is of interest to me. It's 36 to the third power, which is 46,656. So I know my denominator is 46,656. The numerator is 120 because 4 times 5 is 20. 20 times 6 is 120. But if you don't believe me, 4 times 5 times 6, sure enough, it's 120. There we have it. And then I'm just going to get a decimal approximation for this. It's about 0 0.00257. I'm going to use a few more decimal places than perhaps I normally would. Well, actually, one more decimal place than I normally would. Two more decimal. There we go. And there we have it. That's the probability that you get a 5 on the first roll, 6 on the second roll, seven on the third roll. I'm going to bring this over here just to make it easier for us to see. All right, now what about the probability that all three rolls are eights? Okay, well, that's actually pretty much the same question we were just doing. It's just that all three of them are the same. So instead of first one being five, second one being six, third one being seven, you want an eight for the first, an eight for the second, and an eight for the third. That would be all three or eights, right? So I want eight, an eight, and an eight. Well, eight is five out of 36. So you're gonna do five 
out of 36 times 5 out of 36 times 5 out of 36. That makes 125 out of 36. Or excuse me, 125 out of 46,656. 36 to the third power is what I meant to say. So it's 0 0.002679. So throw that in there. Let me double check that number. Yep, perfect. Okay, so that all three, this part right here, all three meant it had to be a multiplication rule. They didn't come out with it like they did here, right? The first rule is this, the second rule is this, and the third rule is a seven. They didn't say and, but it has to be an and because that's how you get all. All is one of those words that hides the and part of itself, if you will. Okay, now what about the probability that none of them are nine or ten? Nine nor ten, excuse me. Well, that's a little bit more complicated, so... There, and I just threw in that terminology for all eights up there just because I thought that'd be easy. All right, let's talk about a single rule here because this is going to be more complicated, so I want to make sure I get it. So for a single rule, the probability of a 9 and 10 would be these two, right? 9 or 10 is 7 out of 36 because it's 4 out of 36 plus 3 out of 36. So not getting a 9 or 10 would be everything else. So let me type that up. Okay, for a single rule, the probability of 9 or 10 is the probability of 9, because it's or, 9 or 10. So probability of 9 plus the probability of 10, that's 7 out of 36. It's these two put together. So not having a 9 or 10 would be the complement of that, which is 1 minus 7 out of 36, which makes 29 out of 36. All right, but we're not going to work with single rules. We're going to do three rules. All right, so for three rules, I want them to all not be 9 or 10. So I want the probability of not getting 9 or 10 on the first, not getting 9 or 10 on the second, and not getting 9 or 10 on the third. Okay, so what we want is to not have a 9 nor 10 on any of the three rules, right? No 9, 10 on any of the three. So that means you don't want a 9, 10 on the first roll, you don't want a 9 or 10 on the second roll, and you don't want a 9 or 10 on the third roll. So that means you're going to find the probability of not 9 or 10 and multiply it by itself three times. Ah, but we already found the probability of not 9 nor 10 right here. It's 29 out of 36. That's why we do that single die thing up there. So this is 29, this is 29, and this is 29. So our numerator will be 29 to the third, which is 24389. If I divide that by 46,656, I'll get 0.522741. Oops. Let me double check that number. Oh, 5227. 522741, and that numerator was 24,389. So it helps completely if you figure out the little pieces you're going to need first, and then you can use them and apply them when you have to do the more complicated part with three rules. All right, so now let's do the same idea, but there's those dreaded words at least one. So at least 1 is a 7. So we're going to find the probability of no 7s and take it away from 1. Well, let's start off with a single roll. So for a single roll, what's the chances we get a 7? What's the chances we do not get a 7? Let's start with that. Probability of a 7 is 6 out of 36. It's, it's right in the list. 7 is the most common one. And then while we're on the subject, the probability of not getting a 7 would be 1 minus 6 out of 36, which would be, oops, 6 out of 36, which is 30 out of 36, right? Because there's 30 non-7 rolls you can make. And you could reduce this if you want, but I mean, I don't really care. So why don't we just leave it unreduced? 
So now we're going to talk about three rolls. So for three rolls, I want the probability of at least one seven. So that means that I want one minus the probability of no sevens on the three rolls by the at least one roll. Okay, using, or I should say using the at least one roll. Okay, so how do I find the probability of no sevens? Well, I don't want a seven on the first roll, I don't want a seven on the second, and I don't want a seven on the third. So I'm going to have to find those probabilities and multiply them. Okay, so here it is. So I want no seven on the first roll, and no seven on the second roll, and no seven on the third roll. I could put on in there just to make it a little bit more clear. No seven on second roll, no seven on first roll, no second on third roll. Okay? So I want the probability of no seven times the probability of no seven times the probability of no seven. And I want to take all the all of this, excuse me, one minus that. My fault. So I want one minus all of this. Okay, well, I know that these are all what we just found up above. Probability of no seven is right here. It's 30 out of 36. So I'm going to find the probability of no seven. So that's 30 out of 36 times 30 out of 36 times 30 out of 36. All right, so this is going to be a little bit more complicated because this is one minus. Now I need to figure out what this is. I know where the denominator is four, six, six, five, six. I need what 30 to the third power is. Well, actually, I can figure that out in my head. 3 to the third is 27, and then there'll be three zeros. I mean, if you don't believe me, I can pull up a calculator. 30 to the third. There you go, 27,000. I would not lie. All right, so then I want to take, if there's 27,000 no sevens, then I want to take 4, 6, 6, 5, 6, and subtract away 27,000. And that'll give me 19,656. And I'm doing that because 1 is, of course, 40,000 or 46,656 over itself. So let me grab that number again. It was 19,656. And if I divide that by 46,656, I will get the denominator, or excuse me, the result of 0. 0.421296. And there we have it. So just to reiterate, here's what we did. So we know what it is for a, for a single roll. For a single roll, it's 6 out of 36, and then 1 minus that, which is 30 out of 36. But for three rolls, when you want the probability of at least 1, you take 1 minus the probability of none of them. So you want no 7 on the first, no 7 on the second, no 7 on the third. So you find, and then you subtract it all from 1. So you take 1 minus the probability of no 7s, which is 1 minus 30 out of 36 to the third power. That gets you 1 minus 27,000 over 46,656, and that gets us our final result. And there it is. We are done with that example. And it's a really nice example because it pulls together a lot of different ideas for multiplication rule. You can have different things that you have to multiply. You can have the same thing that you have to multiply. You could have negatives, so this involved the complement rule because you had to take it away from one. And then you could have not only the complement rule because you have to take it away from one and then multiply afterwards. And then this one, you have to multiply and then take it all away from one. So you have like two negatives here. So you have to find this first negative up here for a single roll, and then you have to use that down here and then also subtract from one there because of the at least one rule. So that's showing you all the different types of probabilities we can ask you using the multiplication rule. All right, we're all done. I'll see you back here for more videos.